now, or is it just me? Okay, it's just me. <laughs> I probably am uh, back feet, aren't I? You can look a little bit. We were doing this, this study in Sunday school. couple of weeks, and uh, this morning and in particular, this, uh, this, this picture that, that Rob puts in his book, that you know, when, we're, when we're filled with the Spirit, when we bump into people, we should just pour out of us. Such a powerful picture. And so I quickly got my phone out and I, I, I had this thought that, that I wrote down on my, my uh, note, notepad and uh, I simply said, to be an influence, you must be under the influence. Man, the next time I get pulled over for speeding and they ask me that question, have you been drinking, sir? <laughs> Man, just the power of the spirit, officer. <laughs> And I'm getting ready to give you some of it. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I may or may not end up in the back of a police car, but if I do, I got even better ground to get some Jesus into that office for the whole ride back to the station. So, hey, I, I remember uh, I, I heard one time a, 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 a preacher say he was at a, he was at a uh, airport and and so he's going through the security check and the uh, guy asked him, "Do you have any uh, shop objects?" and and he says, he says, no, but, uh, but just the Bible. <laughs> and the guy kind of looked at him and, you know, stepped back a little bit. And he was like, the word of God, sharper than any double-edged sword. And, and so he said he got held at customs for a little bit. And he, uh, he said, I got an opportunity to preach Jesus to all those people. And anyways, it was uh, the Spirit, nonetheless. If we want to be influenced, we must be under influence. And that's, the, that's what Paul says. Those who walk by the Spirit are children of God. And so, as we're influenced by the Spirit, we walk as children of God to influence people. And, and, and that's what we're talking about today, church. Is, 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 is what does it mean to live a life of influence? You know, all of us. It's been said, everyone has influence. It's not something that just because you raise to the top of a business does that mean you have influence. I know a lot of CEOs who have zero influence. <laughs> you can be the boss and everyone hates you. <laughs> doesn't mean you have influence. Everyone has influence. And, and, and simply influence is this. The impact that we leave can either be positive or negative. So I take back what I just said. CEOs can have influence, but it can be negative. It doesn't mean that it's a positive influence that leads you to a place better as you work. Every person has influence. God put within us a, a, a sense of influence. But how the impact is upon people, I believe, really determines, is based on the heart of the character of the person. And so we looked last week about favor. Jesus grew in stature. He grew, he grew in wisdom. He grew in favor with God and with men. And we talked about the significance of, of having favor upon and, and the importance of God blessing and, and, and using, pouring into our lives. And we're going to talk about this week the influence we need to have on people. Because you and I, we, we may not, and intentionally, I, I, I love this, just, just think about this. We may not consciously or intentionally uh, commit treason against the kingdom of God. But we definitely help the enemy whenever we don't challenge him. Anytime we let the enemy just go free and do what he wants to do, whenever the church does not take their stand, 
against them. We are in some ways enabling the enemy. Isn't that what Jesus said? I will come to establish my church in the gates of hell and not prevail against it. So all of us have a responsibility within the kingdom of God to allow God to leverage what he has given us so that we can influence the people around us with Jesus. I want to talk about that influence today. I think it's so important that each of us understand really the significance that we play when it comes to influencing people around us. I want to read you just a quick scripture. It's just one verse. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 15. I just want you to, I just want you to hear this, this one verse. Jeremiah 15, verse 19. And the Lord responds, If you return to me, I will restore you so you can continue to serve me. If you speak good words rather than worthless ones, you will be my spokesman. You must influence them. Do not let them influence you. Holy Spirit, this morning, we want to understand the role that we play as believers to influence people for the kingdom. And it begins by first understanding your favor, the enablement, the empowering, the blessing to be able to go as, as we are under influence we go to influence. And so, Spirit, each of us are called to do this. And so help us to understand and to put this into practice today. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. How many of you believe that God cares about the people around you? Amen. Amen. Your co-workers, family members, whether that means distant, close, your neighbors that live next door to you, maybe a few houses up. I believe God cares for every person that's in the sphere of people that you're around daily. And if that's the case, that changes your entire purpose of life when you're around them. This is what this is what God's word was through through the prophet Jeremiah. I will restore you so you can continue to what? Serve me. If you speak good words and not worthless ones, you'll be my spokesperson. That ought to really make you think about all the words that you speak. You must influence them. Do not let them influence you. When, when you go out in your day, there's always going to be things happening. There's going to be two things happening. Either you are going to be influenced or you're going to be influencing. And people around you, you go to work, you have co-workers that are going to say things, do things. There's going to be a demeanor about it. There's going to be things that you see them do and hear them say. And if it's going to impact you, you can't help it. The things you watch on TV, the things you hear, everything in some way has an impact upon you. People are influencing you. Or they're trying to put something upon you. There's a, a sense of a influence. Or are you being the one that's influencing a pretty simple question. But I believe it carries significance when we talk about the kingdom of God. Let me, let me read you something last week that I shared with you about favor. 
And, and this was the definition I gave you guys. Favor is the attraction of God to you that releases an influence through you. To do what? It is to accomplish the assignment that God has given you. And that was key. Something that God has placed within us and then God works his power over you, around you, so you could have influence for people. We're going to look at these lives of, of characters in the Old Testament that carried something with them that enabled them to do things that they wouldn't have been able to do without God doing it. Daniel, Esther, Nehemiah. These, these characters understood the importance and significance of God's favor upon them, God's blessing upon them, that it opened up doors they never thought could open. It put them in positions they never thought could be possible. Why? Because it opened up an influence through them to people. But if we're going to be an influence, then we have to realize that people are always going to be trying to influence you whether they know it or not. And how much better for God's people to go out into the workplace that maybe has chaos, maybe has gossip, maybe has negativity, and for you to come into that, intersect with that, with the kingdom of God. What if you on Monday could influence someone's life that just had a bad weekend? Think about it. You are an influence. But if we're going to be the right influence, we have to get under the influence of the Spirit to operate so that we can do the things that we should be doing. All of us are ministers in some fashion in the workplace. And leadership, I want, I want you to get this, leadership is key at every level and part of society. But leadership is not just for those who have the formal title or they have the top position. Listen to this, in any given situation, no matter small it can be, you have an opportunity to impact an area of influence that reflects Jesus. John Maxwell talks about this all the time in his leadership books, about influence. You can be the littlest guy in the totem pole and have the most influence of people around you. Because it's not about who has the formal title, who has a degree, who's up here, who's doing that. Influence is relational. All of us are in relationship with other people. And if we're in relationship, then we can have influence. But the key is, for Christians, is that we want to influence people in a way that reflects Jesus and can bring alive those words your kingdom come and your will be done. So anywhere we go, anywhere we step into, we are bringing the kingdom, we are bringing God's will into something. Because we want to be carriers of the influence. And you can shift atmospheres. You can change your work environment. Don't come to me and complain about your work. Go and pray for some empowering so that you can go back to that workplace and you can shift the atmosphere. Because you complain, it's just doing the same thing to co-workers are doing. <coughs> we don't change things by, by following the pattern of the world, but by the renewing of the mind, we look at the kingdom mindset and we say, Jesus, I'm in this place. What do you want to do? How do you want your kingdom to come? How do you want your will to be done? And step into it with authority. That's what we've been talking about. And I believe things radically change. Opportunities will reveal themselves as we do this. But what is that, that understanding of the sphere of influence? I, I, I want to read you a scripture real quick. Uh, open up to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Let me just read you a couple of scriptures. Uh, it says in verse, this is 2 Corinthians 10, verse 13, and, and so Paul writes this. 
He says, we will not boast about things done outside our area of authority. We will boast only about what has happened within the boundaries of the work that God has given us, which includes our working with you. We are not reaching beyond these boundaries when we claim authority over you, as if we had never visited you. For we were the first to travel all the way to Corinth with the good news of Christ. Nor do we boast and claim credit for the work someone else has done. Instead, we hope that your faith will grow so that the boundaries of our work among you will extend. Then we will be able to go and preach the good news in other places far beyond you, for no one else is working. And then there will be no question of our boasting about the work done in someone else's territory. So there's a model here, there's a picture that Paul gives us when we, when we talk about understanding the sphere of influence, the, the place that God has put you, the place that, that God has assigned you. All of us are ministers, not, not just because we, we work in a church or because we're a missionary abroad. All of us are ministers of the gospel of Christ. Each of us. God has you in a certain place. And I don't go there. You guys go places that I don't know. You're around people. I just loved hearing Sunday school. Julie this morning was, was talking about how she's been able to talk with some soldiers about Christ. She's in a position, she's in a place where God has put her to use her to influence that place. Those people that I may never ever talk to. And so we can't think into our minds, all i got to do is, 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 is get them connected to the pastor, and then we'll get them saved. <laughs> Has anyone ever heard that philosophy before? <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I, I've had it all the time. Pastor, we need you to come here and pray for this person. Why? You can't do it? <laughs> Why? Jesus gave you the same authority he gave me. You know, that isn't like because I'm a pastor, I've been given something more than you've been given. I'm a Jesus follower. I've been given what you've been given. So you don't need to say, i got to give them to church so that the pastor can preach and they can get saved. Man, do it right there. Give them the gospel. <laughs> it's called relationship. Influencing. And so, you know, you guys get to influence people. You get to be around people that I may never come in contact, maybe never talk to. But because you're there, that's what Paul's saying, because this is where God put us then we're going to do what we need to do. And, and so this word, this word that we find, this word for boundaries, uh, the, the Greek word that Paul uses for boundaries is, is this word, this is the definition of it. It's a definite bound or fixed space within the limits of which one's power of influence is confined. You have a place. You have a boundary. You have a confined place that God wants to use your influence. That means there's something for me. There's a place God has given me. There's a place that God has given you. And so it means, get this, it's a principle, that this word boundary, it, it, it is a principle of law that describes investigating, living, and acting. In, in other words, in your sphere of influence, you need to investigate who are the people around you. What are their backgrounds? What are the struggles? What are the issues? And then you need to live and act around them with Jesus. Influencing only comes when you're in relationship. If we're going to influence people, you have to be in relationship with them. A lot of bosses try to influence co-workers or employees, but never have relationship, and then they wonder why no one likes them. It happens all the time. If we're going to influence, it begins with understanding, uh, measuring the influence, the place into which we're at, Paul says. And then he says that, that we need to maximize the influence 
and the place we're in. If you jump back to his first book, 1 Corinthians, I want to read chapter, uh, chapter 10. Let me add this into the mix of this. 1 Corinthians 10, um, verse 31. So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all to the glory of God. Don't give offense to Jews or Gentiles or the church of God. I too try to please everyone in everything I do. I don't just do what is best for me. I do what is best for others so that they may be saved. So that they what? You be saved. I just changed your entire understanding of why you go to work. If you really take this to heart. You're there to influence. You're there to accomplish the kingdom. And so, what does it mean to maximize your influence? It means to live like Jesus. Live like Jesus. People are living like all kinds of things today. And it's, it's interesting, when you, when you look at the world today, people, people are pretty open to talk about anything. And yet we don't talk about Jesus. People will have, I'll sit down with people before and have conversations just about anything. I mean, they'll talk about anything, but we don't talk about Jesus. I'm like, why? People today are, are open to, man, they want to talk about everything. And we're letting the greatest opportunity go to the wayside. So take a hold. Holy Spirit, today. You ever prayed this prayer? Holy Spirit, today as I wake up, I want you to use me to impact. I want you to use me today to influence uh, the world around me. Well, let's take that one step better. Don't just say, I want to be used to influence today. Say, I want to be used to influence my coworker who is Dan today. Because I know what Dan's going through, and I want you to open up that opportunity. I want you to work in, and open up an opportunity just so that we can have a conversation. Don't make it generic. Man, begin praying about certain people that you know God wants you to, 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 to work around, certain situations that God wants to put you in. Pray specific. Don't just pray about, I just want to be an influence today. Well, okay. Is there a certain person that God wants you to influence? Pray about that specific person. I have my list of people. Every day I want to be able to in some way continue to open them up to the gospel. So pray that every morning. Maximize your influence. Look at 2 Corinthians again, 10 verse 13. We will only boast about what has happened within the boundaries of the work that God has given us, which includes our work among you. We are not reacting beyond these boundaries when we claim authority over you. For we were the first to travel all the way to Corinth to give you the good news. And so nor do we boast and claim credit for the work someone else has done. Instead, we hope that your faith will grow. Listen to this. That your faith will grow so that the boundaries of our work can be extended. God wants to extend your area of influence as well. Not just here. He may want to begin to extend out because guess what? Your co-worker Bob, Bob has a friend and Bob's friend also isn't saved. And so you begin to work in Bob's life Guess what? Bob comes to Jesus. Now you have an opportunity to begin to reach out to Bob's friend, Joe. Your influence is extending. And God may want to extend your influence further than you're comfortable with. But why? Because people need Jesus. People need Jesus. So as we minister to these people, we want to be able to then uh, extend beyond the influence. And then look at verse 16. Then we'll be able to go and preach the good news to other places beyond you where no one else 
is working. This is a powerful picture for Paul because he's saying, as, as we preach to you and as you guys get the gospel, that then frees us and allows us to go and do it elsewhere. Because there's elsewhere, there's more people that need this besides just you. And that's why Jesus, when he was preaching, he said the people want him to stay. Jesus, stay and keep doing this. And, and, and so Jesus said in Luke 4, I must also go to the other towns and preach because that's why I come. It can't just be this. God gives you an influence, and then he wants to extend that influence. He wants to put you beyond those boundaries when he has seen that you can steward and are faithful with what he's given you. Don't wish to be in someone else's, I wish I was doing what they did. No. You do what God's put you to do. He's appointed you there, and you do everything there until he calls you to extend that. Because guess what? Influence also has to be steward. If you're not a good steward of influencing people here, God's not going to open up this over here. So be a good steward in where he has placed you. And as that influence spreads, Paul says, we also want to go beyond this. And God may want to open up an avenue for you to go beyond just that place. Look at 2 Corinthians. Stay in the book. Go back to chapter 4 real quick. I just want to show you this. Verse 11. So Paul writes this. He said, yes, we live under constant danger of death because we serve Jesus. So that the life of Jesus will be evident in our dying body. So we live in the face of death, but this has resulted in eternal life for you. I want you to catch the impact. Our influence can increase. The amount can increase. When you and I realize that it's not about what is inside us, but who is inside us. Not what, who. Paul said, we lived under this danger because we serve Jesus. Because we're serving Jesus, yes, things are going to happen. But... This was so that the life of Jesus would be evident in our lives. So there's three things here. I'm going to catch these three things. Number one is we are called to serve. And our service should be evident because the life of Jesus will be demonstrated. So that what? So that when we live in the face of death, this has resulted in eternal life for you. Our purpose of life. Serve. May Jesus be evident in my life so that people can get saved. There it is. There it is. Our influence. So that the result can be people will know Jesus. I can't put it any simpler than that. So the only thing we can do now is to go do it. <laughs> and you may wonder, do I have do I have an influence? If you ever question yourself and you ever wonder, do I really have influence? I want you to think about a story found in the book of 2 Kings chapter 5. It's called The Unseen Influence. It's, it's not too much of a, it's just a, a quick, quick scripture. 2 Kings chapter 5. Hmm. 
you know this man by the name of Naaman. And the story is, is that he gets leprosy, and so he writes this, this letter to the king about uh, his, his leprosy and, and what's he going to do. And, but you know, there's this little part in this whole story that sometimes we can overlook about influence. Do you remember this, verse 2? And it says, at that time, Aramean raiders had invaded the land of Israel, and among them, among the captives, was a young girl who had been given to Naaman's wife as a maid. And one day the girl said to her, I wish my master would go to see the prophet in Samaria. He would heal him of his lepers. We look over this little girl. Do you know what Naaman does? This man of position, authority, power. You know what he does because of that, that suggestion? He goes and sees the prophet. Because this little girl believed if he goes, he will be healed. And this is a picture for all of us. The picture for us is as follows of Christ. The unseen influence. We may feel like we're just small and we don't have much, much extension in the people around us. But our influence is not about position, but it's about a gift that God puts in you. And if you let him use you, you can end. We can lead people to Jesus who can heal them. She said, if he would just go see the prophet in Samaria, he'd heal him. She believed, she knew the prophet could heal him if he went and saw him. Who believes that Jesus can heal people? Who believes Jesus can save people if he'll send people to Jesus? So Jesus said, let your light shine. And so the way I look at this is two ways. Light, you can be a campfire, you can be a flashlight. Who has ever had a flashlight shown in their face? And who was happy afterwards? <laughs> but that's how, when Jesus, when Jesus said, be the light, that's the way I see it. We need to be at the campfire that gives a welcome, gives a warmth into a cold world provides a way for people to be able to cook food over, a way that provides, or we can be like a flashlight that just shines and aggravates people and just makes them. When Jesus said, be a light, I believe he meant be a welcoming, full of grace and truth, so that when people look at you, when people see your light, they'll want to come. How did David influence people? Remember when David was chosen to anoint this king? Yes, he had all the kids out. Here's all my strong, tall boys. Samuel said, no, no, there's somewhere there's still another one. Where's he at? Oh, David, yeah, he's out in the field. You don't want him. No, bring him here. People of influence, you know how they get influence? Because they don't try to put themselves out there. They do what they're supposed to be doing. And God is the one, his favor is the one that shows up. And how did David win the hearts of the people? Because his influence. Because his heart. God said, I want a man after my heart. I don't care about who's tall and who's big and who's strong. I want a man after my heart. If you go after the heart of God, he'll give you influence. Father, We want influence in our lives. We do. We want to be able to, every day, the people who are around, we, we, we see the things they talk about, we see their, their Facebook posts, and we see the things they're dealing with. Whether it's sitting around the break table, or if it's going out to the mailbox and we, we talk to a neighbor, or if it's sitting at home and we see things the spouse or kids are dealing with, or we want to be able to have an influence in the, in the sphere of the people you've given us, the places. I believe this morning it begins in the heart. It begins with the heart after you.
invited to stand. We're going to sing a song. Lord, this morning, we need you. We need your favor upon us that draws and puts through an influence in us around the people that we come in contact with. As Jeremiah said, don't be influenced, don't let them influence you. Lord, we're in this world. We're ambassadors for the kingdom, and you've put us here to influence the people around us for Jesus. And that's our desire every day, is that the things we say and we do wouldn't put people away, it wouldn't, it wouldn't send people away, but that it would be a sense of, of that would be a, a salt flavoring. A light that would welcome them to, to come and to, and to feel like they can talk about what they're going through. An influence that draws people so that Jesus, we, we know that we can send them to you. If we can bring them to you. If we can be like these four men that carried the man that was paralyzed on the mat. If we can just get this guy to Jesus, we, we know Jesus can change his life. We know Jesus can fix the marriage. We know Jesus can fix the finances. We know Jesus can fix the, the sickness. So let's get out there. Let's influence. Let's, let's get people to come and, and realize how much Jesus loves them. And it begins in our heart today, Jesus. We, we want a heart that is given over to you. A heart that's after you. And so we need you. Do you need him this morning, church? Sing this song and make it our prayer today.